Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Uh, today I thought I would talk briefly about my solar generator window pass-through. So out on the back porch here, I have four 100 watt solar panels and these are not bolted down to anything. Uh, at some point I, I might mount them on my van. I might mount them on the roof and pull permits for that. I don't know, but right now they're not attached to anything, right? Well, I wanted to use them while they're not bolted to anything. And my battery here uh, in my solar generator, this is my solar generator right here inside a Pelican 400 cube case. Uh, it is a 1,200 watt hour LifePo4 uh, battery. And the thing about LifePo4 is it hates cold. Anything below freezing, it hates it. It'll, it'll shorten the, the cycle life. And it also hates hot temperatures. So you don't want to leave it out in the sun, right? Uh, anything above, I don't know, 100, 110, 120 degrees, something like that. So if you put LifePo4 in an RV and you don't put it inside the air-conditioned space, uh, you're probably going to shorten the lifespan of the battery. Similarly, if you put it not inside the, uh, the heated space in an RV and it freezes, you're going to probably shorten the lifespan of the battery. So I wanted it in here in my living room, right? Uh, and, and that way I can charge, my primary use case for this is I charge cell phones, uh, my laptop, I've got AA batteries here charging right now. You can see I got a cell phone right there. Um, sometimes I, I, I actually try to charge all of my battery powered devices. So I've, I've got a Milwaukee quick charger here for the, uh, the M18 fuel batteries. Uh, I charge those with this system. Um, I've got a Greenworks uh, electric lawnmower, uh, cordless. I, I charge those batteries with this system. My boosted board, my electric bicycle. I mean, I try I tried to charge everything that's battery powered with this system just because, I don't know, I can. Like, I've got the capacity here and why not, right? Um, I'm, I'm not a prepper. I'm curious about solar and I like to be as independent as possible. And so I guess the reason why I went down this road is because I didn't want to spend thirty or forty thousand dollars for a roof-mounted solar array for my house, like grid tie or something like that. Uh, this was a fraction of that cost, and it still teaches me everything that I wanted to know about solar. And now that I've built it, right? Like I just want to use it. So I've got all these battery-powered devices that I charge with this thing. I didn't want to leave it outside because it would shorten the battery life. So what I did is this window. I made a block of wood there. And I cut it, I ripped it on the table saw, and I contoured it to the bottom of the window and also to the sill, and then I drilled two holes and I just ran my, my solar PV cable through there. And then on the back side, I've got a storm window here that you can see. I made a similar block for the storm window, and I drilled two holes and I ran it through there, right? And then on, on the other side, I've got those waterproof MC4 cables. So this is a great setup. It keeps all the air conditioning inside the house. It keeps my battery cool because my battery is inside the house. And it keeps the solar panels out in the sun where they need to be. So this is, this is great for me. Now, every time I show this to somebody, they start yelling about code. Yes, I know. This isn't how you actually run solar into a house uh, when you have to be code compliant, right? That's not bolted to anything. This is not bolted to anything and this is not bolted to anything. None of this is part of the house. It's all portable, it's all temporary. I'm not aware of there being any code issues for doing this. Um, maybe, you know, having, having this thing in the window violates code in some way. I, you know, they can send me a letter and I'll remove it if, if that's seriously a problem. But considering that all of this stuff is temporary, I don't, I don't see the problem. Also, I will, I will say this. I had a solar contractor out here and I asked them for a quote for rack mounting these panels. It's only a 400 watt array. Nobody wants to touch that with a 10 foot pole. It's not enough money, right? Uh, 400 watts is just not a large system. You know, they, they'd probably only be able to charge me a couple hundred dollars or something to mount it to the roof. Uh, you know, just nobody wants to touch it with a 10 foot pole. They don't want to deal with it. So what do you do when you've got a small portable solar generator like this and you want to use it on a daily basis, right? You don't want to, you don't want to let these, these solar panels not collect energy every day because they cost a lot of money and frankly, they use a lot of environmental resources to create them. So you want them to be in use. 
But if you can't mount them on the roof because there isn't enough capacity yet, you know, say you're say you're buying this stuff a little piece at a time or something, right? And you can't mount them on the roof yet. What do you do? Well, I think you do something like this. I don't know. Um, if you have a better idea, if if you can think of a better solution for a for a small problem like this, leave me a comment down below in the comments. I, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you think I'm an idiot and I'm going to burn my house down, tell me about that too. I don't care. It's fine. Um, I care about burning my house down, clearly, but. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that it's going to be a problem. This, the insulation on this solar PV cable is very thick, uh, and I, I drilled the holes to a fairly tight tolerance. And I'm not, I'm not yanking them to the side. I would prefer that those were grommets instead of uh, interference fit holes, but I, I think it's probably okay for now, for a temporary solution, right? I wouldn't sell the house and leave this in here. I mean, that would be irresponsible. I'll, I'll leave a little disclaimer here. Don't try this at home because everybody gets mad at me if I don't say that. I don't know why people get mad at me if I don't say that. I, I think that it's uh, implicit, right? I'm, I'm building this crazy thing here. Uh, I, I sort of know what I'm doing and I'm sort of an idiot about it because uh, I'm, I'm not an electrical engineer. So, you know, <laughs> I don't have that, that wealth of knowledge to draw from. I'm just kind of bumbling along. So if I burn my house down, it's nobody's fault but my own, right? So similarly, don't try this at home unless you're willing to assume that risk as well. Um, anyway, I, I just thought I would show all of this to all of you. I will close on this note. I've seen commercial portable solar generator systems in this same uh, class, right? So like 1,200 watt hours, something like that, lithium-based, uh, Goal Zero has an AGM-based system. I, I really don't like AGM, but, you know, honestly, their system is way cheaper than this. So, uh, you know, it's not quite as capable, but, uh, I, you know, it's worth a look to look at the Goal Zero Yeti 1250, I believe. It's pretty much in the same class range. Um, you know, if you buy a Yeti 1250 and you want to charge it, how are you going to charge it, man? Maybe something like this, I don't know. I like this because it's a cool way to, to get a feel for how solar works, right? You get to, like I can, look at my, I can look at my Victron power meter here and I can tell how much wattage my, my equipment is drawing at any given point in time. These batteries, two of these are full and two of them are still charging. Um, and I'm currently drawing five watts. Right, so that's that's probably mostly from the Midnight Classic right now. I think I think this thing only draws like a watt or less when I use the DC connector here. But yeah, I mean, I, I get to I get to evaluate how much power my my portable electronics actually draw when they're charging. Cell phones cell phones draw a couple of watts, you know, as much as uh, ten watts sometimes. It's it's interesting, and you can't do that if you don't have something to play with. So. I think this is an interesting solution. Uh, yeah, so this is Jesse with Create This. Hope you found this video interesting or useful. Uh, hope it didn't offend you too much, <laughs> especially all you electrical engineers or uh, solar installers. I know I'm gonna get some hate mail about this, uh, but thanks for watching. Please subscribe.